magpie. Ah, yes. Spring is definitely here. The flowers are blooming, the birds are singing. Just fill your lungs with the sweet smell of the earth. Frankly, Captain, it doesn't smell that sweet to me. You're right. No wonder. That's the town dump over there. Blistering barnacles, there's people camping there. They're gypsies. How can they stand that stench? <laughs> that sounds like a child crying. <laughs> oh, no. I think she's hurt. Poor kid. Don't be afraid. You'll be all right. Come on. Let's find your mother. Hello, everybody. Hello. We found her in the woods. She was hurt, so we brought her home. You are a kind man. I'll tell your huh? fortune for you. Cross my palm what? with silver. I don't believe in that stuff. Let go of my hand. <gasps> oh. What do you see? I see a new car and... Ah, and a visit from a large foreign lady with blonde hair and... Ah, lots of jewelry. Oh, a terrible disaster. What terrible disaster? The jewels are gone. Vanished. Gone where? Mm, a little silver and I will tell you more. <laughs> Mumbo jumbo. Well, we're off. But take my advice and camp someplace else. It's unhealthy here. Do you think we are here because we like it? You think we like living in all this filth? This is the only place the police would allow us to camp. Blistering barnacles. I insist that you move at once. There's a big meadow over by Marlin Spike Hall. It's my property, so you can move there whenever you like, okay? Professor Calculus. Are you all right? Yes, indeed. I fell from quite a height. That confounded step. Nestor! Yes, sir? Did you call the mason? I give up. Bianca Castafiore. Ah, the dear old Milanese Nightingale. She's arriving here today. <laughs> Castafiore? Here? Today? <laughs> You're joking. No, I'm serious. She says she needs a few days rest. Here, read for yourself. Blah, blah, blah. Blistering blue barnacles, it's true. Catastrophe, calamity, cataclysm. There's a little P.S. for you. Kindest regards to Captain Bartok. Ooh, Haddock. Senor Castor Oily. Haddock! Nestor! Sir? Pack my bags immediately. I must be out of the house in an hour. Uh, yes, sir. All hands on deck. Abandon ship. Where are you going? Anywhere to get out of that living cyclone's path. Yeah! Captain, are you all right? Billions of blistering blue barnacles. Anything broken? No. Just help me up. Yeah! You have a bad sprain there. You must keep off this foot for at least two weeks. Two weeks? But I'm leaving today on a trip. Oh, out of the question. You're lucky that leg isn't broken. Yeah, real lucky. If this is luck, give me disaster. Guess who? Disaster! How, how did you get in? Ting, ting, let us in. Signora Castafiore arrived just as the doctor was leaving. Misericordia! What has happened to you? I sprained my ankle. Let us in. What do you mean, us? Why, Irma, my maid, who always travels with me, and Igor Wagner, my accompanist, who obviously has to <laughs> accompany me. Oh, how absolutely thrilling to meet the man who makes all those daring ascents in balloons. Where is the little present for Captain Drydock? Present? Here it is, Signora. Ah, thank you, Irma. 
I know an old salt like yourself must often feel very lonely, so I brought this pretty Polly to keep you company. <coughs> Blistering eardrums. I... Uh, that is to say, what a delightful surprise. Nothing could have given me greater pleasure. Peace and quiet at last. The reporters will be after me, of course, but I'm traveling incognito. His name is Iago, a compliment to Senor Verdi. You see, parrots have an unfailing instinct. They immediately recognize those who really love them. Gucci. Oh, dear. Cannibal, messy bazook, vampire! It's just a teeny weeny bit sore. Irma! The first aid kit, please. Jules, they're irreplaceable. Absolute favorite. It was given. I love to see how lovely I am. Look at this Miserable bird. I can hear you. So, how's the foot today, Captain? Oh, just peachy. Thanks. Oh. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. Paris Flash International. An interview. Oh, I'm very flattered. Gladly. Huh? With Signora Castafiore. Oh. Well, I'm sorry she doesn't want to do any interviews right now. Ah, uh, Captain. Hello? I look forward to seeing you. Ciao! I thought you said you weren't doing any interviews. But this is unimportant. Now I must practice with Wagner. Bye-bye. <laughs> Free. Ah, peace at last. There's old Cuthbert pruning his roses. How are your roses getting along? I have a little secret to tell you. Splendid! No, no, they're white. And guess what I've named them? Uh, I give up. What? That's it, Bianca, which means white in Italian. Oh. Who on earth are they, and what are they doing here? Yes, yes, Bianca, like our delightful guest. I wonder what they're up to. But you won't read the word, will you? It's a surprise. Huh? There you are, Captain Hammock. Captain, when are you going to stop wearing that shapeless old jersey? And that hair? You look like a scruffy little schoolboy. Here we go. Thanks. I think we have all we need. Very well. We'll see you at lunch. We can take a nice quiet walk, Captain. Ill, sir. What's all this? Get well cards, no doubt, sir. And the Paris Flash sent us a complimentary copy of their magazine. Now, what does this mean? Read that, will you? And tell me if it makes any sense to you. Heartiest congratulations, Captain Chester. Congratulations for what? I just don't... What? Have a look at that! Exclusive! Milanese Nightingale Bianca Castafiore to marry Old Salt! Old Salt! Brutes! Filibusters! Congratulations! Yeah, well. No. Oh, Captain! Have you seen the marvelous article the Paris Flash did on me? You call that a marvelous article? I call it preposterous! Outrageous! Well, it's the first time for me, and I. Hello. Yes. That's right. Television? Here? No! Leave me alone! Misericordia! Signora, I know our viewers would be overjoyed if you would sing your famous jewel no, song no. from Faust. Why, yes. Emergency! Take cover! She's going to sing! Hello! I can hear you! Hello! Blistering barnacles, now what? Just look at that. That horrible rag of a magazine. What's wrong, madame? Those 
cads from Il Tempo have been spying on me, taking my photograph without permission. So that's who the mysterious photographer was. And I thought he was a jewel thief. It would be a safer job. <laughs> well, it's outrageous. How dare they publish such an ugly photograph of me. I'll sue you. It was a pretty good shot of the bird. I can hear you. <laughs> Thundering typhoons, blistering barnacles, I... And such language, really, Captain. Uh, I... You would never hear such disgusting language from Madame Castafiore, misericordia. Has anyone seen my little gold scissors? They didn't grow wings and fly away, did they? No, madame. Senor Wagner, where do you think you're going? And I suggest you get that step fixed before someone gets hurt, Captain Hammock. Whoa. Hello, is this the stonemason? Ah, Mrs. Bolt. <laughs> oh dear, I can't find my little gold scissors anywhere. Great snakes! My emerald! Someone's tripped on the step again. <laughs> of course, you, Captain. Are you suggesting... Wait, three of you can be ruled out. You, Captain, because you can't go upstairs in your wheelchair. Tintin, who was with you, and Wagner, who was playing the piano in the Maritime Gallery. Yeah, same scales over and over and over again. That leaves Irma, Nesta, and Professor Calculus. You must be out of your mind. If not, then who? And in private. And furthermore... If you insist, I'll send Nesta in, but you're wasting your time. I'm sure those gypsies are innocent. Me too, but the scissors they found are not going to help. My dear friends, I have extraordinary news. Really? No, I've just invented the television set. You old pioneer. Precisely. In high definition color, too. An extraordinary picture. Better than the cinema. But somebody's already invented television. Why, certainly. I invite you all to a demonstration in my laboratory. I call it Super Cuthbert Color. Ah! <laughs> Today's news. Police... Thundering typhoons. What a coincidence. He's talking about me. The sound. The sound. No. The sound. That's not me, is it? How ghastly. With her, of course, is her famous and exotic collection of jewelry, capable of climbing up the wall of the house. Enough. Misericordia. Stop. Ah, <sighs> of course, it still needs a little work. Closer to the jewel thief. Why, Captain, you're up. Yes, the doctor just left. He took off the cast. Whoa, uh, Captain! <laughs> Professor! Professor! Captain Bangkok! What happened? Uh, it was the wheelchair. It, uh... I have some bad news for you. You have bad news? Yes, I must leave tomorrow. They are clamoring for me at La Scala in Milan to do a Rossini opera. I'm terribly upset. <laughs> Shattered. But are you sure you can't stay? I know you would like me to stay, Captain. But alas, I've made my reservations. Oh, happy day! What was that, Captain? Happy day! My wheelchair's gone away! Oh, happy! <clears throat> Goodbye, dear Captain Hatbox. It grieves me to leave you, but Rossini calls. What opera will you be singing? La Gazzaradra, a magnificent role. 
Thank you again, one and all. I'll be back soon, I promise. Hey. And my poor emerald. <gasps> Let me know at once if you hear anything. Of course. Dear lady, I... Arrivederci. Goodbye. Come back soon. Wait a minute. That opera, La Gaza Ladra. I've got it. What do you mean? <laughs> Be careful! <laughs> Steady there! Aha! Two bits of glass, a marble, and the emerald. I've got it! Wonderful, Tintin! You're a genius! Tintin, what made you guess the magpie had it? The name of the opera, La Gaza Ladra. What about it? La Gaza Ladra means the thieving magpie. Magpies will pick up anything that sparkles or shines, like a pair of gold scissors or an emerald. I knew there was a magpie around here. Then when Miarka mentioned the tall tree by the brook, and magpies only nest in the tallest trees, the rest was simple. The scissors must have fallen out of the nest. Splendid. You've cleared the gypsies of any wrongdoing. Some apologizing to do, gentlemen? Just our luck. The one time we managed to catch the culprits, they turn out to be innocent. How true. You think they've done it on purpose? Ha ha! Look! That broken step has finally been mended. But the cement's still wet. We can't walk on it for a few days. You have to step over it, like this. Very well, sir. Aye aye, Captain. Hello, who's that? I just popped by to tell you. Ah, Mr. Bolt, you did a wonderful job on the stairs. I just popped by to remind you to keep off that step for a few days. Too bad, too. That was a lovely bit of marble, that was. Blue blistering barnacles.